Epirus, a California-based defense tech firm, delivered a cutting-edge microwave-based anti-drone weapon, dubbed the Expeditionary Directed Energy Counterswarm, XDCS, to the Naval Surface Warfare Center Dahlgren Division. This system is now slated for evaluation by the U.S. Marine Corps. The XDECS platform builds upon the company's earlier Leonidas Expeditionary model and uses high-power microwave, HPM, pulses to neutralize multiple drones at once by interfering with their electronics. The system passed a series of rigorous acceptance checks, first at the factory level, then by government inspectors, in accordance with the Department of Defense's formal evaluation process, documented under Form DD-250. This delivery follows a contract managed by the Navy's Office of Naval Research and is supported through the Pegasus program, which funds early testing of anti-drone ground systems. XDECS is specifically crafted to augment the Marine Corps' low-altitude air defense and ground-based air defense strategies. Designed for high mobility, it can be mounted on light tactical vehicles or trailers, suiting expeditionary warfare needs. At its core, the technology relies on gallium nitride-powered, long-duration microwave pulses controlled by software, allowing operators to fine-tune its output without altering the hardware. This new variant is one of several in the Leonidas product family, which includes the pod, IFPCHPM, for fixed or semi-fixed locations, and a maneuver-based SHORAD, short-range air defense, system. AirPower 2.0 recently confirmed that XDCS represents the fourth unique configuration produced by Epirus, with an extended range version targeting 10-kilometer coverage already in development. Epirus CEO Andy Lowry likened the system to a non-kinetic version of the Navy's phalanx system, rather than firing bullets, XDCS bombards drones with intense electromagnetic energy, frying their circuits without physical impact. This, one-to-many, effect allows it to counter entire swarms of unmanned aerial systems, UAS, in seconds, which Lowry sees as vital in the current threat landscape. Compared to traditional microwave weapons, XDCS reportedly excels in several key areas, reduced size and power requirements, a non-ionizing radiation footprint, and adaptable software-defined operations. Its architecture uses plug-and-play amplifier modules, ensuring maintainability and scalability, while open APIs allow seamless integration with command and control frameworks like FAT-C2. Importantly, XDCS is pitched as a cost-effective alternative to kinetic defense systems. Where missiles or guns incur high per-use costs and carry risks of friendly fire, the wide area, non-lethal effect of XDCS allows for safer and cheaper swarm disruption, reportedly costing just 5 cents per engagement. Leonidas systems have undergone extensive military testing, with the U.S. Army receiving four IFPCHPM prototypes in May 2024. Army leadership confirmed plans to test them under operational conditions in CENTCOM areas. General Randy George and Acquisition Chief Doug Bush have both highlighted the growing role of such directed energy solutions, noting that while high-energy lasers still face integration hurdles, lower-powered options like PGL are already delivering results for base defense. With drone and missile threats rapidly multiplying, a trend seen vividly in Ukraine, U.S. defense planners are leaning heavily into directed energy platforms. Epirus XDCS has shown strong results against both lone UAVs and dense swarms, suggesting it could fill a critical niche in layered air defense strategies. Navy and Army officials have backed expedited deployment schedules, with Vice Admiral Brendan McLean and General Eric Carrilla publicly supporting the shift toward HPM-based deterrence. Epirus has also mounted its Leonidas tech on armored striker vehicles through a $66 million prototyping deal with the Army's Rapid Capabilities Office. Field trials held in late 2023 demonstrated real-time drone neutralization, and the modified striker made its debut at the AUSA conference shortly afterward. As part of broader strategic goals, the company intends to collaborate with the Navy in upcoming advanced naval technology exercises and anticipates potential system trials in both Pacific Command, PACOM, and Ukraine, depending on trial outcomes. Looking ahead, Epirus plans to open a major simulation and training center near Fort Sill in Oklahoma by the third quarter of 2025. The facility will offer immersive environments for directed energy operations and serve as a hub for training U.S. and allied personnel.
the company is also expanding its production infrastructure to meet rising demand. Since launching in 2018, Epirus has carved a unique niche as a Neo Prime, a modern defense contractor combining the agility of Silicon Valley startups with traditional military hardware development. By focusing on modular, software upgradable systems, the company aims to deliver scalable tools for countering a new generation of electronic and aerial threats.